y'all. Somebody asked for a day in the life of what I do, so I decided I would just kind of show you what we get into and what we do, and we'll just hop into it right now. Just woke up. It's like 6.37 a.m. Um, during the summer, I'm not up as early as I am during the school year because I have like extra time to do whatever the heck I want during the day, so. Obligatory birdie moment. Kisses. Kisses. <gasps> Did you say no kisses? Oh, peekaboo. Ah! Oh, peekaboo. You know, I can kiss. Such a sweet girl. First thing I do in the morning is start my coffee and get the inside animals fed. I like the creme brulee coffee it is delicious and of course reusable coffee plug filter thingies because we're trying to save the world morning feed means that the birds get their mash uh, this mash was very lentil and green pepper heavy and they seem to really enjoy it rick gets the larger amount because he actually eats it samantha gets a tiny amount because she throws it on my walls no, I'm not kidding. She throws her bowl across the room. I love the cockatoo dearly, but she drives me nuts. Here. Num nums. Ooh, nummies. Samantha num nums. Ooh, delicious. And of course, I have to feed and water my tiny little psychopaths. Hello, tiny little psychopaths. Water. Damn it. Excuse me. Stop, I'm drowned. These guys are going to start going outside today to start tempering them to that world so that I can put them in the grow out cage. I also am going to water my fodder for the first time today because you need water to grow fodder. I did not mean to make that rhyme. Feeding the dogs is easy. I just make sure they have food in the feeder and kick it. And then my quail baby chick eggy thingies are on lockdown. So I'm gonna check on them. There are no hatched quail yet. Um, I'm not very confident in this hatch because uh, this is the hatch that we started when the power started going out real bad during our last snowstorm a couple of weeks ago when we got like two feet of snow. So I'll be surprised if like we get a hatch rate of like 10%. Yay. So once I get the animals fed, I start working on feeding us. Sydney was not up to help yet, so I was tasked with breaking the eggs on my own. Um, doing this one-handed with the baby on hip is kind of frustrating at times, but surprisingly, I only got like the smallest amount of eggshell into uh, the bowl, which I was pretty happy with, to be honest. Sydney did wake up in time though to pour the eggs into the saucepan and move them around a bit. And she was a huge help with this moment. We had some old stale popcorn in the uh, cupboards. So I had let that soak overnight and kind of ferment a little bit so that we could give it to the chickens in the morning. Um, ignore how bad my chickens look. We had a bit of a dog problem about two months ago and they're still looking a little bit rough. They are also pouting because they are in timeout in the coop um, until they are a little better looking, so to speak, and they're, you know, healed up a bit but they're still the same old annoying chickens that I've always had. Uh, they still love their cuddles and being annoyed. You gotta love a little hawk cuddle moment. She is such a good girl, even if she is a freeloader and hasn't been laying eggs. Next, it was time to feed the horses and the goats, but the dogs were having an obligatory howling moment. Next, it was just time to get hay for the horses. I couldn't find my knife, so I just used my bale trick. And basically, you just rub twine and twine together until something snaps. It works like a charm, although I did almost fall backwards on my butt, which was not fun. 
Then I just ran over to the side yard and topped the horses off on their water. Patty Patty. Shooey shoe boy. After the horses and chickens were taken care of, I stopped over to feed my dodo heads and get them taken care of. These guys are growing out so beautiful and I'm very happy with how they're starting to look. And of course we can't forget the guinea fowl and my blue egg layer who thinks he's a guinea fowl. Next, I fed my rabbits for the morning. Nothing special really to report here, um, other than look at that itty bitty babies. Aren't they just so cute? I say itty bitty, these guys are like already eight weeks old. Next, I packed the kids up in the car and I grabbed our rabbits that we were taking down to the springs and got them ready for a sale I was doing down there. Um, I just threw the rabbits into the car next to the kids and we are headed off to the races, so to speak. After we sold the rabbits, I got myself a coffee and the kids a snack oh, before we headed over to the local farmer's market that was going on. And y'all, I really enjoy our local farmer's market. There's always okay. so many things to see and to look at. And Sydney was having so much fun gallivanting around here and just kind of looking at everything. She was looking for the perfect piece of jewelry. But at one of the stands, we found Queen Anna who decided that she was going to face paint the local children, which was so kind of her to visit from Arendale. Anna munched on a plum while we sat and watched Sydney play at the park uh, where the farmer's market was. Um, Sydney is a swings kind of girl, so I sat and pushed her on the swing for probably about a good half hour before I told her my arm was going to fall off. After the farmer's market, we headed over to the feed store to go pick up some feed with the money we had just gotten from yep. uh, the bunnies. And Sydney wanted to pick up some strawberries, so we'll give them a try again. After that, I brought the kids home, put Anna down so that she could have some lunch, and got started on cleaning. These birds always make a huge mess, which is mostly my fault because instead of doing normal bedding, we do shredded newspaper so that they can forage through it and find their nightly pellets so that they don't just have a full uh, bowl of pellets and it gives them something to do. After about a half hour of elbow grease, the living room is looking spick and spanned again. I put Anna down for a quick nap and got started on dinner. Uh, Sydney was really being a pasta monster, so it's just simple spaghetti and meat with uh, some broccoli. Now, did anyone eat the broccoli other than me? No, not really. Dinner was Sydney and Anna approved with two thumbs up. After we were done with dinner, I ran out to the barn to make the horses their sloppy toppies, which is just basically their supplement soup that I give them on a nightly basis of alfalfa, grain, supplement of fat, and some beet pulp. I take that inside and I put it under hot water and I let that soak for about 20 to 30 minutes until it is a disgusting soupy mess that they absolutely love. And of course we gotta boop the soup because why would you not boop the soup? I had a live I had to do this night, so I got it ready while I was waiting for the horse's soup to soak and I was going to tattoo, so I got that all set up. Once I was done, I mixed around the soup, making sure it was the correct consistency of mush so that it was easy for the horses to eat and digest. Once that was good to go, I just ran out into the barn and I started feeding and taking care of the rest of the animals for the night. Want some sloppy toppies? Dally, you want a sloppy toppy? <laughs> Dally girl, you want your sloppy toppy? Max likes his sloppy toppies, fat ass. You like your sloppy toppies, moo boy? 
Does Moo Boy like his sloppy toppies? Nom, 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 nom. I also grabbed some quail eggs um, out of the coop. We're actually going to incubate these and put them in after the current ones are done hatching. And I got the little dodo brains up top fed as well. After I got the animals fed for the night, I got the girls down to bed and I hopped on my live. We tattooed some rabbits. If you're interested in watching that, it is currently up for your viewing pleasure. But yeah, that's kind of a typical day. Sometimes we spend more time at home, sometimes we don't. But anyway, I want to thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.